since this is a personal democracy forum, I would like to start my introduction with the actually personal story, small personal story. Uh, my name, myself, I'm from Ukrainian capital, Kiev, but originally I'm from a small town. And once I uh, recently visited my grandmother, uh, actually not recently, but several years ago. And uh, that time I just changed my job and she was wondering, what am I doing in my life? And I said that I'm working for NGO, for a non-governmental organization. And uh, she asked me, well, if non-governmental, then what or which? And uh, she was wondering, why do we identify ourselves through the denial, actually, with regards to something? So I said, OK, maybe, um, well, we are working in third sector. And it also didn't help, because then it's uh, also, there is a first sector and second sector. So we are secondary to, secondary to something. Also, uh, non-for-profit organization also didn't, have, uh, didn't help, because um, non-for-profit, if not for profit, then for what? And uh, finally, civil society organization uh, more or less worked, but still a lot of questions left. And uh, my grandma was wondering who is Spain and who is defined what we should do. So that conversation led me to the contemplation of uh, and uh, opened for me several kind of a, a schizophrenic questions a little bit, like who am I and what am I doing and for whom I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, here I would like to share some of the ideas, uh, and most of, uh, most of them are actually um, concerning Ukrainian situation, but I think uh, many of the things would be applicable, applicable for many other countries. I'm looking for remote control, okay. I will use for my presentation the pictures of a uh, well-known Romanian caricaturist. Uh, his name is Dan Pryovsky. I find them uh, very colorful in a sense. So one of the things, one of the most important things is uh, changing context. We are working in the world with a very dynamic change of the context uh, for our civic activity. And there are many different factors, some of them favorable, some of them unfavorable. Uh, obviously, those things we were talking about, uh, about emerging new uh, media and communication technologies are those things which are helping us. But also, new opportunities also bring new challenges and they open new questions we have to be ready to answer. And one of the things I want to, uh, I want to touch is uh, actually the gap between the civil society, NGOs, and society. It's a very topical issue in Ukraine, maybe uh, same for other countries. As they say, I, I keep on repeating that phrase for myself, as they say in London subway, mind the gap. And uh, one of the problems that it's very important to Ukraine, in, in Ukraine, to, um, to, to actually uh, reconsider or, re yeah, to change this position of the civil society organization, to make them from this Mason's Club or closed circles, to make them more closer to the middle class. And until that moment, I think we will be very restricted with our impact, with our influence on what is going on in our country. And um, uh, sometimes, really, there is a feeling that the line of those people who are willing to purchase, I don't know, iPhone is much bigger than those line who is willing to protest against uh, severely beaten, the case of the severely beaten journalist who is risking he or her life every day to bring some transparency in, in our society. And I, I liked very much uh, the phrase from one of the uh, organizers, from yours, uh, Bio, Jakub, you, you wrote, uh, that you always put citizens first, right? And uh, I, I thought that uh, that it's very difficult sometimes in in our context, in our situation, when citizens do not them 
do not put them first for themselves. So very often in, uh, in, our, in our situation, the role for civil society organization is actually to bring this change, to, to arrange it. Another important point I would like to, to touch is um, personal empowerment. I think it's one of the most important global trends which is happening now and which will take place, which will develop probably for next several dozens of years. The, the role of, uh, of civil society, of, of the person in establishing and promotion of the demo democracy is growing. And obviously with the help of uh, new media and communication technologies, it's much more efficient. And I think here, the role of our roles is uh, to make these changes uh, happening much faster and uh, and more efficient. Another thing, another factor, another thing I would like to touch is um, these uh, new opportunities versus new challenges. I know that in many countries represented here, we are still facing those old problems. For example, I would like to talk about censorship and who is uh, de defining our freedom of sp our space for freedom. In our countries, very often it's happening that uh, uh, this freedom of expression, freedom of speech, free freedom space is defined, or yeah, the boundaries are created by by business groups, by very often non-democratic governments. And, uh, but still, these are, uh, and self-censorship, of course, and censorship, those challenges we are facing, but these are kind of the old problems. But there is, uh, at the same time, new challenges and new problems which are brought by the new opportunities. And I would like, I would like just uh, to touch them. Uh, today, Jeremy Zimmerman was talking about this, um, this entertainment in our activity. He said, please do have fun. And uh, yes, it's one of the problems but that uh, uh, entertainment-oriented media, they don't want to cover all the things we do. Corruption, censorship, human rights, it's not interesting. It's not sexy, really. It's difficult to make it sexy. And very often, we are civil societies, we, we are, it's not part of our portfolio to, to have fun. So it's one of the challenges which also we have to, to consider. And, um, Another thing is that uh, there is a great vast of problems we have to cover, we have to deal with as civil society organizations. And we want, to all, we want all of them to fit into the agenda and to be covered. And it's almost impossible with the, this uh, access to media and uh, our resources. So yes, new media, by the way, and all the things we were talking about today are really of a great uh, use and great help uh, for us, but at the same time, uh, another important thing and challenging thing for us in Ukraine is how actually to canalize, to to bring those these vibrant activism from virtual reality to to the to the reality. Because sometimes we have this situation when people in Facebook they are subscribing to support the protest against something, but at the same time when we have the protests. There's uh, only two or three people show up. Uh, then another thing, and um, uh, I remember Ellen from uh, Sunlight Foundation was talking about it uh, today, about the changing of the models of the relationships uh, between the government and civil society organizations. It's a, it's a, it's a new paradigm and we have to be aware of it uh, to understand these, uh, these opportunities and challenges of the new context, but also to understand our new roles, which we have to be aware of. And whereas 20 years ago, uh, civil society organizations, wherever they might have been viewed in opposition to other sectors, to the government and business, uh, now we have to actually reconsider our roles. And this question, uh, 
confrontation versus partnership is not anymore on the agenda. We have to, yes, we have to, we have to use both. Even in Ukraine, I have to say that most important things we did in last years uh, facing this completely very difficult political situation and uh, political persecution and uh, other things, repressions and things like this. Uh, still, I have to say, I have to underline that we were not able to achieve any big, big thing, big result without the cooperation with the government at some point. Yes, we hated each other and uh, uh, they really didn't like us, we didn't like them, but we had to use this partnership in order to, to achieve those things. So this is a very important. This picture is about that very often we are facing this, uh, in Ukraine, this situation that the government and the opposition under the table, they are all entwined, very the same, let's say, in terms of corruption, in terms of their approaches to the politics. But, uh, but yes, for us, uh, as civil society organizations, we have to understand uh, our new roles and, uh, uh, and have to use our new opportunities uh, to achieve maximum of the results. Uh, also, I'd like to think that maybe one of the most important conclusions uh, derived from, from this contemplation is the change of the definition we are having in this, uh, in this changing context. Uh, and um, yes, actually, definitions of us, NGOs and civil society, are changing, and now we are not anymore sector-dominated predominantly by NGOs, but we uh, we are becoming a serious actors as in terms of bringing innovations to the government, uh, proposing new alternative ways of solving the societal problems, uh, proposing new instruments, coming up with new instruments, develop of, of development of them. Uh, we very often define the course of the, of the country, and uh, especially it probably would be true and important for those countries who lived through these colorful uh, revolutions like we did in 2005 uh, with Orange Revolution. So it's civil society w today with new opportunities uh, have, to, have to realize this role uh, in um, that we are helping society to make these steps into the future. This is another slide, and here I don't have to explain much, right? This is us, actually. I, I'm sure many of you feel uh, felt in these shoes, was were in these shoes. Uh, we are value-driven, value-based, uh, in front of big mills, growing mills, but we are also growing. And um, to tackle those mills, we have to to aware of today's changing context, of our changing roles, of our changing definitions. And uh, this is how we can, we can efficiently uh, tackle them. Uh, I would like also to, 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 to say that um, actually changing context brings us many different roles. We are, all of us are a bit, little bit advocators, we are facilitators, we are service providers, we are defenders of the standards, capacity builders, many other roles. And looking forward to the future, civil society leaders have actually to uh, understand how shifting external um, uh, context will shape their opportunities uh, to, to achieve real impact. And in particular, we have to, uh, oh, yeah, and in particular, what this evolution of the relationship with the government, with business, with international uh, organizations. It means that civil society have to, have to um, find and look for, look for a lot of new is inspiration and motivation. This is one of the way how we inspire ourselves and motivate ourselves. Uh, but I, I, I would like to finish my presentation uh, adding a little bit of colors here. This is actually one of the good examples, very concrete examples of what is personal democracy is. What you see here, it's a violation of Ukrainian constitution. In Ukraine, our constitution obliges 
members of the parliament to vote personally. It means that they physically have to push the buttons themself, themselves and it's against the law to vote uh, for, for your partner, for your colleague. So for 20 years of our independence in Ukraine, uh, it, was never, it, it was never actually done before. And in previous, for example, parliament, before uh, last year, we had only, we detected only one, only one MP who didn't violate the constitutions. All others did. Uh, I'm here, one of my capacities is the founders of Chesna movement. And what we did last year, uh, we conducted a huge and massive campaign uh, with the, um, it's called Chesno, it means honest or fair. And we tried to, to, to make our parliament more accountable and responsible. And it was one of our demands that MPs vote personally. What I have to say that in one year, using all possible roles with uh, monitoring user-generated content, with advocacy, with the political dialogue, we were able to achieve a really tangible, and I would say maybe a historical change for our country. Now, these days, almost 95% of the parliamentarians, they vote personally. Uh, and I have to say that we were able to achieve it, taken yeah, in, very, it, it, in very controversial context, using all its favorable and unfavorable factors, using all possible and impossible roles of civil society, and maybe, uh, yeah, the one most important thing that we were able to, to um, to understand that the main part of the definition for us, for civil society organization, that we are people who bring changes. So I think this answer would be most appropriate uh, with the, in the conversation with my grandmother. Thank you so much.